Penn State football commits their linebacker room in a big way. They get their next commitment, and I mean big literally. Tammy Robinson from Pittsburgh is a four-star linebacker joining the Nittany Lions. We'll get into that and uh, all the facets of his recruitment in just a bit here on the White Hope I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. We are discussing four-star linebacker Tamia Robinson committing to the Nittany Lions this Friday evening. I'm here with recruiting insider Ryan Snyder to give us the full picture, give us the story form with all the little, you know, Lord of the Rings details. We're going through all the stuff that happened today on the way to this very long journey for Tamir Robinson becoming a Penn State Nittany Lions. So, Ryan, where do you want to start with Tamir and his recruitment to Penn State? Uh, just the just the fact of how important he is. This is this has been a recruitment. Him and Tony, uh, who of course just committed yesterday. This has been a long time coming. Both of these guys have been one and one a on Penn State's linebacker board. Yeah, you know, I would say at least a year now. I mean, Tony got an offer in July, so uh, Tamir was a little bit before that. And uh, I mean, Tamir has been incredibly important. Really, I mean, he was he took his first visit to Penn State all the way back in October 2019. I believe it was for that Michigan whiteout game. So they they identified him early as a as a talent, and uh, nothing there, nothing has changed. He's he's certainly going to be one of the top players in the country uh, right now. We have him at number 126. In the on three consensus, number nine to the linebacker position, number three in Pennsylvania. Our scouts at on three have him as number two in Pennsylvania, number 11 at linebacker, number 159 overall. So the consensus and our scouts are, are pretty similar there, a little bit of a difference nationally, but only by about 30 spots or so. Uh, really kind of came down to Penn State, Virginia Tech, and Miami. Miami felt like the team that pushed Penn State the most here, but Brent Pry had a massive impact on this recruitment on both ends, really. Yeah. Tony Rojas, or <laughs> Tony Rojas, Tamir Robinson would have been committed by now, without a doubt in my mind, if Brent Pry never leaves this program. I mean, he uh -huh. flat out admitted that to me in April that that was kind of in the works at some point in the spring. And then, of course, or previous to the spring, of course, Brent left uh, in November, but that was in the works kind of last fall. And then with Brent leaving, it kind of, put a pause to everything. And, and really from that point forward, it was, it was about getting closer with Manny Diaz. He even admitted it in, in April that he still needed to really get to know Manny. And that's really what that official visit was all about. Of course, they brought him on campus with Tony Rojas and all the other committed players too. And, and Tamir spoke very highly of, uh, you know, just that overall bond and, and that weekend in general. So a uh, big get for Penn state. Again, they beat out Miami and Virginia Tech, basically, but there are a host of schools that that really uh, pushed for this one, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a big get for Penn State. And by the way, I, I keep saying Tony Robinson and Tamir Rojas. They are going to be joined <laughs> at the hip and in my brain throughout their entire career, no matter what happens, because we've been talking about these two players for such a long time. And we were talking a little bit before the show of like, we, I like these things to be singular. So we're talking about Tamir Robinson. We're discussing his story alone. But really, it's hard to do without talking about both of them. So when you when you look at these commitments back to back and and now Tamir Robinson being a part of the Penn State class of 2023, how big of a commitment was this and how big was it to get these two players across the line considering uh the teams that were interested in in that you just mentioned that were interested in Robinson and the totality of the class now that you have these two pieces finally in place. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean one thing I'll say this is a bunch of crystal balls and RPM picks. They they went in early for Tamia Robinson, right? They last fall. I think I put mine in February. And for the longest time, publicly, you know, fans have seen Penn State's a favorite here. And of course they look at those and, and they kind of just gauge off of uh, what we put in. But there was a point here in, oh, I don't know. He went to Miami in early April. And somewhere between early April and that official visit, maybe even a little after that official visit, where I think he was leaning towards Miami. And more and more people have kind of hinted that now that this has gotten to the finish line, right? There wasn't a lot of people <laughs> talking about it uh, when at the time. But but there was a point where Mario Cristobal had not only had his foot in the door, but was the was probably the favorite here. So mm -hmm. the fact that Penn State was able to get that out of the way, you know, get 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 him to change his mind, of course, uh, and, and to lean back towards Penn State and of course get it over the get it over the finish line. Well, it's never over the finish line until December, I should say. Not not yeah. for wood Penn State fans, I know. But <laughs> but to get it to this point, uh is is a big win for, for Manny Diaz 
Um, and, and really Terry Smith too. Of course, Terry Smith had a, had a massive impact. Terry is uh, Penn State's ace recruiter really in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh. And, yeah. and he, I mean, Terry was probably the one who did the most here. It was really kind of getting, uh, getting comfortable with Diaz then during that official visit that made, uh, it made it stick. So uh, yeah. big, big get. I mean, there, there really just also weren't a ton of other linebackers that Penn State loved. You know, they liked Jordan Hall. OK, yep. they liked Phil Pachotti. They liked a few others, but they didn't love him. I mean, they loved I, Jamie Robinson. And, and I think it, it Manny Diaz and his style of defense and the way he wants to play played into that in a significant way in this class. Because if you look at the, the, the linebackers they pursued, including Tamir Robinson, the guys that stuck around from the beginning of this cycle all had similar abilities. They could run, they can hit, they were multi-dimensional players. And I think that's a huge part of the Manny Diaz uh, influence here. Let's talk about him quickly before we get into some of those skills that he's bringing to the table from Tamir Robinson. Uh, in terms of, I don't want to say the recruiting impact, because as you mentioned, Terry Smith had a huge part in this and, and the position coaches typically have a larger hand, but Manny Diaz is the linebacker coach. He was a key figure in getting Tammy Robinson comfortable with the program again. So what does this tell you, if anything, about him as a recruiter and him as a linebacker coach and being able to relate to these top prospects at linebacker? You know, honestly, I don't think – so I, I don't know. I don't want to sound negative on it. I, I, I don't know if these guys are the right – players to judge on how good of a recruiter Manny is just because of how long ago these recruitments started, you know, like, I mean, this was, this was in the work. I mean, like I said, with Tamir, he visited when he was a freshman. So I mean, obviously, yes, Manny Diaz had a big hand in this and, and I want to make sure that he's given full credit. I, I'll really know how good of a recruiter Manny Diaz is. If they get Aaron Childs, if they get Anthony Specka, if they get Chris Jones, those are their pretty much their three gotcha. top 2024 guys. I I, I want to make sure that Manny gets the credit for these it's, 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 with Tony too. But like again, even with Tony, you know, Jaywan J- Sider was probably the most important person there. Him and Alan Allen's Midas too, to some degree, uh, because Jaywan's J- really what kind. I mean, Tony comes up for the whiteout, and really from that point forward, Jaywan's doing the the vast majority of the work there. So. Yes, Manny had a big role. His defense had a big role. Getting comfortable with him, yeah, all yeah. those little things. But but that happened towards the back half of this. You got to get to that point first, and, right? And that's really where Terry Smith and Jaywan Slider and Alan Zemitis and some other people just I think had a more important role. So again, talk to me in a year from now when Aaron Childs is deciding, Anthony Specka, Chris Jones, and I think we'll just we'll have a much better feel for really what what Manny Diaz's uh, strengths are on the recruiting trail and, and how he's able to get it done because Manny's fully involved with those recruitments, uh, yeah. obviously uh, since he's been here for a couple months now. That's why you're the expert. That's why you're the recruiting insider here on our breaking news edition of Tammy Robinson's commitment to the Nittany Lions. Now for my favorite part, because it's the part I know about, that would be T. Frank's film room. We're going to take a look at what Tammy Robinson brings to the table for Penn State. And it is an interesting journey, Ryan. Let me tell you. Because you have these expectations, you have these preconceived notions from what you're expecting, knowing how important that he was to this class. Now, the first thing is he is a, a high four-star talent based on his physical skills. He is all of 6'2", 6'3", somewhere in there. Humongous frame. I understand the conversation about why some people want him to play defensive end. Where is That's where he started the season last year. And let me tell you, after watching those games, I never want to see Tamir play defensive end ever again. Ever again. It is not a natural fit for him. You know what is a natural fit for him? Linebacker. In the middle of a game, this game here, maybe uh, three weeks into the season, I think it was, in a blowout, they just put him at linebacker and said, let's see what happens. And the sparks started flying. He is a natural pursuit player. You can see the frame, the size, the speed, the closing burst. He is physical at the point of contact as a linebacker, which is an important thing, again, that you can see his ability to read, react, and, and a natural ability. These skills that you're watching here, they were not present when he was playing other positions, but at Brashear, he was playing all of the positions. Let me just tell you, he linebacker, yes, and watch his movement skills. This is why he is a complete player. He can cover down the middle of the field. He can flip his, his hips and turn for a tall player. I really like that. Uh, but he also played edge defender, slot corner, safety, Mike linebacker. He was all over the field for Bashir, and it got a sense of, like, we know he's special, but where do we put him and where do we use him best? 
And this is what I like is that he has the versatility of these skills. Now, not all of them are great. And I'm not saying he's doing a great job in slot coverage here. But as a safety, this is really good. You know, that long frame, being able to rally and tackle. I love the versatility he brings. And if he plays a lot in the box at linebacker, he's going to accentuate all of those skills. And then when we go back to the frame and the size, how big do you want him to be? Because he can be as big as you want him to be. Like his yeah. frame can carry as much weight as you want. He'll be a natural at that size. Uh, and then let's get into some of the areas of development. That I think when you look at what he is, Tamir is a raw prospect. Like I said, he picked up linebacker in the middle of a game and started playing it. Now there's over pursuit. There's some false steps. There's some missed tackles. There's some bad reads kind of all over the place. But when you're looking at these situations, you're understanding that situation. I think there's a couple of things that will fix this immediately. The first is playing time, which is a is a uh, bit of a bummer seeing he's coming off uh, the torn ACL this past year. He got like two and a half games at linebacker and then got injured, which was a huge bummer because I wanted to see more. Uh, but there's just a little bit of rawness at the position of learning how to really understand the position. He reminds me a little bit of Abdul Carter during his junior season where he was moved to linebacker at the start of the year, had some hesitation didn't play with that natural speed burst and acceleration. And then he turned it on his senior season. You could see something like that from Tamir, but with the injury, I, I'm going to put a pin in that for now. But uh, two things happen here. The first is that he plays too tall, whether it's at this position or a different position, he tends to play high. He's a tall, high cut player. So it's something he's going to be fighting against for most of his career. And this is just one of those. He's playing upright, kind of a lazy drop here. You want him in an athletic position at all times because when he's ready to strike, he is one of the most explosive players with the biggest frame, the strongest hits. I like all of this stuff. And when you play a little a little high and you're a little inexperienced, you tend to over pursue and miss some tackles. So that's another area where he's going to have to clean that up. The eagerness to get to the football, the ability to get to the football can sometimes play against you when you are uh, that athletic if you're not in control of where you're moving so that those are kind of the things i noticed from his tape of again very early playing linebacker the natural abilities are all there it's kind of filling in the details and letting him grow at the position as he goes forward interesting thing you said the other day and i want to talk about it here because i completely agree with this after watching the film and after watching what manny diaz has found uh valuable at this position you're talking about mike linebacker middle linebacker with tamir is that kind of the what you're reading from the situation as well yeah he's 6'3 225 right I mean he can yeah. run of course but oh just when you compare him to Tony uh it, it would certainly make sense more for him to to be more of a true Mike but and still it's also still really early there I mean Penn State's also mentioned Sam and Will I mean they, they're it's kind of funny like we always in the in their recruitments we're always talking about specific positions with these guys and then they just bounce around all over the place you know when they actually their their first year yeah. or two here but uh yeah. the size perspective yeah there, there's a lot that makes sense there he's only going to put on more weight i mean you can can easily see a world where he's uh 240 245 and and can still move so yeah i, I think that makes a lot of sense and uh yeah we'll, we'll see how it plays out too but but that's definitely something tamir has mentioned as, as a possibility and something he's discussed with pensy it's interesting trying to learn Manny Diaz and, and some of the subtle things that are different from Brent Pry or that he values in each position. And I haven't seen a ton of difference between the linebackers they've recruited at middle linebacker versus Will. But that is the trend I'm noticing is Penn State has traditionally put their biggest, fastest, strongest player at the Will position and then kind of a fluid, smart, in the box sort of player uh, that can read and react and tackle at the mic. But it seems like the size and explosiveness and speed, if the bigger player, Manny Diaz likes that guy at the mic, kind of a bit of a flip. But here we're also talking about if we're if we're talking about these two linebackers specifically, we're talking about the difference of, you know, 20 pounds, maybe. And, and Tony mm -hmm. Rojas is going to be a big linebacker himself. So that's why this is such a great pairing. Hyper explosiveness, speed, potential growth and and just a lot of skill.
So Penn State locks up their top their top linebackers in this class this evening with Tamir Robinson committing to the Nittany Lions. Uh, that'll do it today for our breaking news here on Blue White Illustrated. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss anything from Ryan Snyder, our recruiting insider, from myself, Thomas Frank Carr, film analyst from Greg Pickle, and, of course, from Nate Bauer, our senior insider, bringing you Penn State analysis five days a week, sometimes six or seven, depending on if it's recruiting season. We'll talk to you next time when there's a Penn State commit on BWI 